Let's take a look at the rise of the machines, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. To begin, we'll investigate the first phase of the Industrial Revolution, which went from around 1750 to the middle of the 1800s. We can say that this phase was forged from iron, powered by steam, and driven by textiles. To start, we need to ask, why did the Industrial Revolution begin in Britain? One reason is they possessed the three factors of production, land, labor, and capital. Now, land refers to the natural resources in the land, not the amount of it. Britain had ample amounts of coal, iron ore, and other valuable resources, and the fact that they were not a large country meant they could transport these raw materials faster and cheaper than a larger country could. For the Industrial Revolution, labor refers specifically to cheap labor. And since many peasants were looking for work in the 1700s, Britain had cheap labor and ample supply. Finally, Britain had many rich merchants and investors due to their vast colonial empire, with plenty of excess capital ready to invest in new, profitable enterprises. Now, let's see where we are going with this unit, starting with the origins of industrialization. Of course, one of the greatest reasons why the Industrial Revolution began in Britain is because of geography. Let's look more closely at the five themes, starting with location. Now, Europe at that time was the core region of the world, with more money and technology than anywhere else. Now, this map is in French because it shows that France at that time in 1750 was arguably the strongest country in the world. However, after the Seven Years' War, and certainly after the Congress of Vienna, England would surpass them as the most powerful country in the world. As far as human environmental interaction, the colder temperatures that affected the globe due to the Little Ice Age had pushed Europe into the Second Agricultural Revolution, in which many machines were devised to replace human and animal labor, beginning the process of mechanization that would be taken to a greater scale through the Industrial Revolution. Looking at region, due to the enclosure movement, many peasants were unable to afford to keep their lands, and many migrated from the rural regions to the cities because that's where jobs could be found. With this massive influx of cheap labor, Britain had the means necessary to run their factories with much less cost. For place, Britain possessed many valuable natural resources for industrialization, from a variety of metals as well as many fast-flowing rivers, which would be extremely valuable for the early factories that were powered through water wheels. They also had a government that was eager to pass pro-business laws and tariffs to support their mercantilist policies. And the last theme is movement. Due to Britain's many colonies, there was a cheap diffusion of raw materials they acquired from afar, from their merchant marine, and in turn, a plethora of markets they could sell their goods to, all the while protecting their trade routes with the very best navy in the world. Now, the first industry to truly mechanize was the textile or cloth industry. This makes perfect sense in that through the second agricultural revolution, more food was produced than ever before. Additionally, there were major increases in the production of flax, used for making linen, as well as wool and for cotton. With such an overabundance of raw materials, the need to process them into thread and into finished textiles was a logical progression. Early weaving has been dated to before 5000 BC, but for most of human history, weaving can only be done across the width of the human body. This changed in 1733 when John Kay invented the flying shuttle, which allowed a single person to weave much wider fabrics, and it could be mechanized, allowing for automatic machine looms. In this video, you can see a person using a simple flying shuttle to weave, note the basic moves used to produce cloth. And in this next clip from the movie Wanted, you will see a more modern mechanized version, yet still using the basic principles since the 1700s. It's a shuttle. Okay. I want you to try and catch it. You want me to stick my hand in there? Yes, I want you to catch it.
Now that cloth could be produced much faster, a method of producing thread much faster also had to be invented. This was done by James Hargreaves in 1764 with a spinning jenny, named after his wife. This machine could thread multiple spools instead of one at a time, as had been done since around the 11th century. However, the thread made by the spinning jenny wasn't very strong. Taking that device, however, and making it more automated came from the mind of Richard Arkwright, who invented the spinning frame in the late 1760s, along with the help of John Kay. Arkwright initially tried to power his machine with horses, but later used the continuous power of a water wheel, which is why his machine is usually called the water frame. But Arkwright's major achievement was to combine water power, machinery, cheap labor, and raw materials to create mass-produced yarn. His skills of organization arguably made him, more than anyone else, the creator of the modern factory system. And of course, many improvements were made in later years, such as Samuel Crompton's spinning mule, which produced even higher quality thread even more quickly. Now, Britain kept these innovations and inventions to themselves. They had a tremendous head start, and they intended to keep it that way. However, one man managed to sneak some plans for establishing a factory to the United States. In 1790, Samuel Slater built the first textile factory in the United States, in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. He managed to sneak the plans past the British by memorizing them. Rhode Island was a logical place, since it had fast-flowing rivers and good farmland, like the best-suited locations in Britain. Now, here are some animations that show how water could be used to power a textile mill, or even a flour mill, where you can see how the grinding stones would be used to produce flour, or even a sawmill, where the automatically powered blades and pulleys could do the work of many men, or even a carding mill. Now, carding is a process of brushing wool to make it usable for making thread. This tedious task was fully automated by the end of the 18th century. Along with these inventions came an increased need for quickly processing the natural fibers. Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin in 1793. Now, gin was short for engine, and it quickly removed the seeds from cotton. As a result, this invention also led to an increase in the demand for slaves in the southern United States, as the picking of cotton was still a very labor-intensive primary activity. Now, James Watt is very notable because he made several improvements to already existing steam engines that made them much more efficient. His use of separate condensers was revolutionary, and his engines also used a governor that would release more steam as it spun faster, thereby automatically regulating the pressure and reducing the chance of boiler explosions. If you don't mind the pun, now the Industrial Revolution really picked up steam. <laughs> Ha 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 